The following is a CSPN Media podcast presentation and production. Visit our website at cspn.us for more episodes of the Gridiron Gals. And don't forget to click on the Keep Our Podcast Free link and visit our sponsors to help keep this podcast free for you. You can post for me if you wanted to. These expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. Hit the school, I can get them both. I don't want to choose. And I'm quick, cut a nigga off, so don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now, I make money moves. Say, I don't gotta dance, I make money moves. It is the Gridiron Gals podcast. Welcome back, everybody. I am the NFL chick. Hey everybody, this is me, Chelsea's right. AK, um, yeah, Chelsea, aka Chelsea's right. What's that AKA? AKA. Foxy Red. That shouldn't be oh, yeah. AKA. Oh, that's what I was the last couple of days on Twitter. <laughs> Chelsea, aka Foxy Red, aka your mama, aka your mama again, <laughs> aka your daddy. AKA uh, your mama's mama. AKA your mama's mama. <laughs> AKA you ugly. You your daddy's son. So all right. Anyway, sorry guys, we got off course a little bit. Um, we do have a guest today, because um, obviously we have a lot to go over, and so, Chels, I would love for you to introduce our guest on the podcast. Okay, so joining us on the podcast today, we have um, our good friend, um, Philip Tanner, who is used to be a uh, running back for the America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, and now he is a black revolutionary who goes by the name of Huey Newton, <laughs> a.k.a. Marcus Garvey, a.k.a. Fred Hampton. So um, we wanted to bring uh, Philip on today because, you know, he got a little raked over the coals on Twitter, so we're giving him an opportunity to redeem himself. So say what's up. What's going on? I'm definitely definitely happy to be here. You know, definitely have been on this podcast. I should have been on here a couple of weeks ago. But I think uh, this time, Dean, for me, definitely get on here, especially with what's going on on Twitter and also in the world. So I'm happy to be here and share my thoughts and also hear these beautiful young ladies' views. Okay. Well, that, well, that, that's how you got to do it now. Shoot. You got to mm-hmm. give us compliments and shit. I feel all nice and deep and nice stuff. <laughs> all right. But seriously, we got some serious topics to, to discuss. And and Philip, uh, what we'll do is we'll give you the floor first, and then we will, um, you know, chime in with you. So um, obviously, if you've been living under a rock, um, you've obviously missed the big news, which has been Cam Newton uh, had a press conference this week in which a female reporter, uh, sports writer, had spoken and asked him a question. And we're going to play the audio just in case you've missed it. And um, we're going to talk about what he said. So here it goes. I know you take a, a lot of pride in seeing your receivers play well. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of truck sticking people out there? It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like It's funny. But uh, fun is coming along, man. We're going we gonna, to... This is a big game for him. Obviously, you've heard of the audio um, in which he called. He was uh, surprised by the woman's knowledge of, of route running, and it's caused an uproar um, on social media and has been the talk um, for the past 24 hours and counting. Um, I'm going to start with you, Philip. Um, when you heard his comments, I guess I would like to know what your original thoughts was when you heard it, and then a day later, what were your thoughts after kind of seeing the reactions to everybody on Twitter as a result? Well, it's funny because I didn't hear about it or even read into it until this morning about 5.15. I was in the gym on a shoulder press machine. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bragging at <laughs> So I listened to the comments. First of all, it was Cam Newton. You know, So whenever you hear Cam Newton's name for the last probably three years, it's never been in a good light. You know, whether it's going from the uh, meltdown at the Super Bowl, you know, whether it's going about uh, going against Colin Kaepernick, and then it's coming back and saying he stands for Colin Kaepernick or what Colin Kaepernick is for. So it's kind of been up and down, up and down with Cam Newton. So when I listened to it and the reporter asked a question, the first thing he did, he laughed. You know, he laughed and then he gave his answer about how he felt about the reporter. So when my first thing was, before I go in past my judgment on how I feel, I'm going to ask the Twitter world, 
how they feel about what Cam Newton said. And apparently it had already been an uproar that night. So I was kind of late to the party, you know? So with me being late to the party, I just wanted to see what was his views, how I felt personally about it. I didn't, I didn't have a true feeling about it because I was not knowledgeable enough to know what was going on. But after I tweeted, you know, what he said, what, what was wrong with what he said and why, why was it so puncturing to women? That's when I was being able to get the different views of, how women felt and how they felt about Cam Newton, the how he pretty much belittled the the reporter with his comments and his body demeanor and gesture. And with it being Cam Newton and his the past three years of how his media attention been, then of course it, it, it definitely doubled down on the significance of what he did and how he said what he said. Charles, let me get to you. I, you know, we you and I are talking about <laughs> Of course, online, if you guys don't follow us, of course, it's at the NFL Chick and at Chelsea's Right. But um, I'll give you the floor, and then I, I guess I'll, I'll give my thoughts on what happened as well. Okay, so I have some similar thoughts about Cam Newton, um, just like Philip talked about. I mean, Cam Newton has been extraordinary with putting his foot in his mouth. Um, he he For a quarterback that has been judged so much by his skin color, basically, in, 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 you know, even if it was – you know, in a light way, um, surprised at how he has, how he has turned out. Um, but what he said, it was three things that bothered me about what he said. It was, um, it was the, um, the, the body language, kind of the way he shifted his body and moved his head around. Um, and it was the use of the word female. I mean, and we've been fighting and fighting and fighting about the use of the word female. You know, women say it's offensive guys say, no, it's not. We're going to keep using it people don't know and, and pe- more, more and more guys are getting educated on it and everything but I think it, for this what stuck me up, what stuck the most is that this lady is a beat writer for your team you don't even know her name he doesn't even know her name and I just think it's funny when a female talking about routes ha 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 and he, he you know he laughed for us longer than he should have and um it definitely struck a nerve. Um, it's one of the reasons why we even have the Gridiron Girls, why we even have this podcast and everything. And it's because we needed to give women a safe space to express themselves when we're talking about sports or, or anything else that we want to talk about. We needed a safe space. And the reason why women create a safe space, the reason why black people create safe spaces is because we need to be able to we say we don't want to be judged by those women out there, the reporters, the sideline reporters, and everything. They have to be better than good. And for him to just assume, I mean, she didn't even ask him about no goddamn routes. You know what I mean? She asked him about punches or something about no goddamn routes. So, what, why did you not even listen to the question? Yeah, you're not even listening to the question. So it, it was just, it was just stupid. And but then the outpour came, and the guys were, oh, I don't see what's so wrong. The reason why so many men felt like they needed to come to Newton is because y'all are just like him. It happens all the time. We talk about sports. We talk about whatever on Twitter, and here's some man, and they're explaining what you meant by what you said. You know. Now, see, y'all don't say that a lot of that to me and Rita because you already know you gonna get your mama talked about. <laughs> But I see it happen to a lot of women. So it just, it definitely struck a nerve. It definitely struck a nerve. And, you know, I know that Phillips said he wasn't on Twitter last night, but you it was World War Three last night. It was bad. People were going all night long. All, you know, I'm going like, to <laughs> interject here a little bit. And I, I'm going to piggyback on what you said on the, the strength of, yeah, you know, this woman is at work. I think that the, it doesn't matter where she was. Let's be. Let me be clear. I'm not. I'm not saying it makes it better if she was just some woman, but it does. It is important to know that this was a woman at work doing her job. She obviously writes for the Panthers and have done so. She, I believe, she said for at least a year. So she's clearly qualified to talk about football. If Cam had said that about his, you know, her male counterparts. This probably isn't a conversation. However, he we don't have record of him saying that, or we don't have knowledge, I should say, of him saying that. And furthermore, he singled her out by using her gender. And so people need to understand that the definition of sexism is prejudice based on sex. Based on that definition, that's exactly what he did. I mean, I don't really right. know what y'all want 
it's no clearer than that. I, I'm very Fifty Shades of Grey when it comes to certain things, but this was as black and white as you can get. And I think when you find a lot of men that say they don't, they don't really think it's a big deal. Well, I'm going to give you an example, and, and people might not like it, but honestly, it is the same thing. When you have white people tell you about your blackness and what you should be upset about, you get mad, right? Because they have not lived in your shoes. As a woman, you have not lived in her shoes. You don't know what she has to go through at her job or when she's doing these press conferences to prove that she belongs in this this uh, fraternity of male-dominated writers. So for you to dismiss her feelings or a woman's feelings, a woman who is very knowledgeable about sports, that's extremely insensitive. And to me, it is no different than when you get upset about white people saying, well, you should get over it You and, and being insensitive. It's not different. Listen to what she's saying and, and try to learn something from it. I think that's the biggest problem that I have with this is that people are just okay with being dismissive. Her feelings right. were valid. That anybody's feelings are valid and and to her it was an insult to me it was an insult it absolutely was an insult and so instead of saying i'm not in her shoes i really don't know like maybe i should just you know listen to her because it happened to her you're saying oh it ain't that big of a deal well it's really not for you to decide whether it's a big deal or not like it's her choice to decide whether it's a big deal it's a woman's choice to decide whether it's a big deal so that's the problem that i have with it not only his words but the fact that people want to defend his words because obviously to me that means that your ideology is similar to what cam has said and and to me that's to, uh, to speak on that you know and i agree with you guys and respect your opinions 100 percent in Cam's defense, you know, don't stone me. In Cam's defense, Cam is he's still in the meltdown stage. He he fought he fought the battle the wrong way. All right. And I say this because, and it was a cry out to say, I'm gonna get you back. If you look at it, throughout Cam's entire career, he's been successful. With all his success came scrutiny. All the way from college, getting kicked out of Florida, whether it was still in computers or what, all right? He go to Auburn, he win a national championship. They come back as Mississippi State, come back and say, oh, well, Cam Newton, his father was paid. More turmoil had to go through. Gets to the NFL, he's excited to play in the NFL, he dances. So they come to him about doing urban dances. So what did he do? He come back the following week, and he do a predominantly white dance. If you remember that, that was a predominantly white dance. So now he's like, how can I make everybody happy, all right? So the Colin Kaepernick comes out. He goes against Cap. Okay, Super Bowl. He does it. He's crying. Meltdown. Cam's a crybaby. Cam's getting hit the same way Drew Brees is getting hit. Cam's not getting the flag. So right now, Cam is like, what can I do? You know, everybody's going against me. I'm Cam. No one cares about me. So his outroar and his going at that, I think it was bigger saying that it was bigger than just let me go against her. This was a cry out to say, y'all been picking on me, going at me, and he just fought the battle the wrong way. It's kind of a meltdown, the same way they did RG3. RG3 was the same way. you know. So they get in the mic and they just melt down because either for lack of knowledge, they're not sure how to handle themselves behind the mic. And I feel it was a meltdown and he just handled it the wrong way. And people can say he didn't mean it. Cam absolutely meant exactly what he said, that that lady had no right asking him about routes. And he felt because there's no way a reporter should be able to tell him how to throw a football, you know, or why he shouldn't be able to throw a football because he's an African-American or how he should conduct himself when he scored a touchdown. So it was a let me go back at y'all since y'all going at me, and he just did it absolutely the wrong way. Um, I, I was rocking with you for a while on that one, uh, but nice try, Marcus Garvey. <laughs> this, is, this is not some sort of reparations for Cam, okay? Cam is an asshole. Cam an asshole and his daddy is an asshole. His daddy got him in this goddamn trouble. That's why Cecil Newsom knew they bring his black ass to the damn house ceremony. They are clowns. So, a nice try. Nice try. I appreciate you, black liberation and all that. But not, no, 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 no. Cam is a jerk. Cam did not have any intention behind that other than he's a sexist jerk. And he was just like, ha, 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 that's kind of cute. He wasn't upset. He wasn't in no turmoil. They already they beat the damn Patriots. What is he upset about? Please. Cam needs to grow up. And the biggest but, problem that Cam is having, the biggest problem that he's having is the fact that that he has abandoned his people and the ancestors are pissed and they are going to take it out on his ass and it's going right. to keep on happening. 
It's going to keep on happening. He has not atoned. He has not atoned. He needs to see a healer immediately. Kim Newton might take all of us down with him, for real. He might piss him off so bad. I'm trying to tell you. So, nice try. Yeah, nice try. No, 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 no. Cam ain't ain't getting back at nobody. If anything, all of those experiences that Cam has had should have made him kneel his black ass down when Cam, when uh, Kaepernick was doing it last year. Instead of saying, it's only a thin layer. I mean, it, it, should, it should have. It should have. However, Cam was still trying to straddle that fence, which he's still doing to this day, trying to straddle the fence. You know, uh, he, he, he know, he don't know what side to take. You know, so Cam, he, he's mixed up in the head right now. He, he's very confused, you know. So, uh, of course, he should have rolled. He should have rolled with Cap if he was knowledgeable. But my biggest thing yeah. is our African-American athletes are not knowledgeable at all to even know what he's even standing for or the people that came before him, the Doug Williams, the uh, Harris, the, the, the first black African-American quarterback, what they put on the line so that he could even have a chance mm-hmm. to go play quarterback in an in a NFL, which predominantly white position. So he have no respect for that because he's not knowledgeable of it. You right. I mean, I don't um, I, I don't disagree with you at all. And I think that we saw all of the shit we saw a couple of weeks ago with everybody kneeling and anti-Trump and they left Cam out here. I mean, I'm sorry. They left Cap out here by himself last year. I really think that there um, there are uh, there are a handful of brothers in the NFL who who, you know, they got it. They read. They actually, you know, I, I, everybody who follows me, you know, I always talk about y'all got to go read something, but they don't, they, they are, are learning. I am hoping that this experience and what, what they see in there, um, what they're seeing with Cap is that they will start reading. I mean, he tweets out the information. He has to know your rights, Camp. Um, all of this stuff is going on. Like, it's happening around you, and we, we cannot afford to live in a bubble. Um, I think that one thing that came out of and not to go too much into that, is that players are starting to realize that y'all actually do got the power. Like, nobody really wants the players to walk the fuck up off the field. And these players were like, hey, something's got to give. So going, going back to that, but, you know, Cam, Cam abandoned Cap, though. Cam abandoned Cap. He abandoned him, and, and, and I'll have no sympathy for him. And so... The, and the, the, the other thing is that it's been 24 hours. He hasn't apologized to anybody. Now, here's when he should have apologized. This young lady approached Cam after, off the record, asked him why he responded to her like that. And his answer was just as bad as it was in the, in the um, interview. It was something like, oh, well, you know, I ain't know. Maybe, maybe I should have said, um, I think it's funny when reporters talk routes. And I bet he, I bet he put his hand on his hip when he said it like that too. Real fancy, and fancy, and fancy, fancy, real fancy, real fancy. See, he got the right one because you know what I would have told his ass. Oh, I think it's funny that you dress up like your grandma after the games. But <laughs> I think it's funny. Damn, that's what I think is funny. If you look at it without accountability, history repeats itself. It was the same way during the Super Bowl. What was it? Uh, a week after, before he came out and did the report and apologized for how he just got up and walked off, and he said, "Oh, they were talking about me." Or if you find someone that a good loser, I'll show you a loser. You know. So he, he still never owned up to his mistakes. It was always somebody else's fault. You know. And he kind of just digs himself. It was the same way it was on the Super Bowl. So. That's who he is. If he don't feel that he's doing anything wrong, there's nothing anyone can say in this. Cam just going to be Cam. You know, so with us expecting an apology, man, good luck with that. Because it was the same thing, like I said, with the Super Bowl interview. I was like, man, so he brought up Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, Wilson lost the Super Bowl, and he handled it like a pro. Peyton Manning, everybody handled it like a pro is when they lose. And Cam comes out and say, if you find a good loser, I'll show you a loser. So pretty much what he's saying was he, it's okay for him to act like that because he don't like losing. I don't want Cam to apologize. Keep that ashy ass apology that you to give him any damn right. I don't want your ashy ass apology because you don't mean it. I, I am not. I'm tired of us asking for apologies that are not genuine apologies. He said what he said. Cam probably doesn't know women that know sports, so that's probably his reality. The problem that I have with that is that he thought it was normal to say on a podium. He thought, and, and, and he didn't think about that. So, look, I get it. I get that. I, what we've learned is that a lot of the, a lot of these men out here don't know 
a ton of women, which I, I find that to be a fault of their own because I am surrounded by women that know football very, very well. But what we've learned is that there's men out here that don't know women that know football extensively. Fine. If that's your re- if that's your truth, that's your truth. I don't think that what you should be doing is half-ass complimenting. Because I think that he thought that this was a compliment and a joke at the same time. We don't need that happening and berating her when she's doing a job that is just as equal as her male counterparts. I don't think that the observer would hire somebody that was not equipped to know what a route is. So you that's the part that, to me, irritates me so bad. And so I don't want him to apologize. I want him to say, hey, I fucked up. and you know, I didn't know a lot of women that knew routes. And so maybe I need to learn, you know, how to be a little bit more sensitive to things like that. And maybe I need to engage in some more women that's knowledgeable about football. Because obviously his mama and his girlfriend ain't that knowledgeable about football. If he had, if he can have the gall and the nerve to say that out loud. So I want you to learn from it. But what I don't want is your apology if you didn't mean it. If he didn't mean to apologize when she confronted him in private, then he don't mean it. Right. That's I when he should have apologized. That's, he, that's, that was the opportunity. Sorry. He wasn't he sorry. Wasn't. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that if he's not sorry, I don't want his apology. Now, right. he, is, is, is him losing endorsements and stuff valid? I don't know. That depends on how you feel about it, on how deep you feel about the situation. I don't know if I would have pulled that trigger right then and there if I was... Um, if I was the yogurt company, however, the yogurt company, the majority of the people that consume that yogurt are females. Wait, man, guess what? I ain't never seen him on a yogurt commercial. I didn't eat them, but you know, <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, maybe, you know, I was like, maybe that's something that goes on in North Carolina because I ain't never seen it before. <laughs> however, I wouldn't, I don't think. I, 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 don't, I think the yogurt company is somehow tied into the place 60 from my readings, you know, of the whole building, uh, the, the healthy, the healthy, uh, body, a healthy person. I think it's somehow tied into the the play sixty, which he, who's he's a huge spokesperson for. Mm. That's correct. You're right. I do think that has a lot to do with That's it. True. True. Um, I just think I, I'm just not I'm just not in the business of caring about his apology. I want Cam to grow up. I want him to stop being immature. You are still fucking writing captions and wing games. I'm fucking <laughs> okay. Grow the fuck up. You have two children. <laughs> We want to understand English. We want you to understand. We want to understand English. We want you to respect women in their fucking positions. And we want you to stop fucking writing like you in the second grade. Okay? And I ask this, and, and this is what I want to know too, okay? Uh, Cam comes out and says it, okay? He puts it out there in the air. Where do we go from here, all right? Do we bring a where? Do we continue to crucify Cam? Or do we bring facts to the table and awareness that the African-American lady is making 37 cents less than males? You know, do we bring that to the mm-hmm. table and talk about equal pay and how we can bring uh, bring more awareness to what African-American women or women, period, is missing compared to working? So you think about it. She was the beat right in there. She's probably just as qualified as everybody else in there, but probably making less pay. You know, and looked at differently. So, do we continue to crucify Cam, or we bring awareness to the problem? You can't do both. Um, oh, <laughs> hey, Rita, <we're laughs> find you somebody that can do both. Fine. No, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. I think that although uh, we feel how we feel about Cam, um, I think that he did with women in sports. Um, almost like something like forty-seven percent of the in, uh, the fans in the NFL are women, um, and, and it, it's just a bad look. Here's the thing about women's rights, and we and just like Rita compared it to um, rights of Black people in this country, um, equal rights to people who have privilege, it, it, equal rights to someone who has white privilege, makes you feel like someone's taking your privilege away. That's the exact same thing that men feel when women say we're making 37 cents less. That women's pay is something that is easily fixed. Way easily to bring equal like equal rights to black people. Way easy. If anybody was interested in paying women what they are worth, they would be doing it. That's just it's just like that. They would be doing it. So um Men are not men do not want to hear about women having equal rights because they will do the same thing that black that people do when they talk about black people having equal rights. Oh, y'all just had a black president. Right, y'all just had a black president. So what y'all mean women don't have equal rights? Didn't you just um have a, a woman run for president? 
That's the kind of stuff they do. So yes, we do need to, we need a dialogue. I don't, I don't believe in piling on anybody. So Cam, all right, whatever. Cam puts himself out there, but it was a lot. It was, I read way, way worse comments than what Cam said on Twitter. I ask your delegation. I, I I agree. I mean, again, I mean, it it's, it just kind of showed us what people really thought about you know women in situations like sports. So we could probably go all day about that. But there's all there's a different layer that got added to it, um, mm-hmm. which was someone found um, this young lady. Her her name, if you didn't know, is um, Jordan Rodrigue. And someone found her tweets last night, uh, you know, people being what they do on Twitter, which is just finding old stuff. Um, and she had said some racist things in the past. I think these tweets were about four and five years old. Um, mm-hmm. Since then, she come out and she's apologized via Twitter. She wrote a, a little mm-hmm. apology statement, um, you know, saying, you know, those tweets are old. She's grown since then. Um, and she's had a couple people, I believe, t- uh, vouch for her that, you know, she's not the same person as she was back then. Um, so we're starting to see the narrative shift a little bit because of that. So do you consider Rodriguez's tweets um, diminishing what Cam did? Because I find that I'm seeing people try and do that. However, do, do you think that her saying those things in the past gives Cam some weird kind of pass as a result. And, and Philip, let's start with you. Uh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I mean, it was it's cute that they found those tweets, and you know, I laughed at them, and uh, I wasn't one bit surprised or astonished or even mad at her. It doesn't change the scene at all. You know, not not one bit. Uh, whether those tweets was uh for five day five days before the game. It doesn't change what happened in that press conference or how he handled the situation, whether she was a racist or not a racist. You know, uh, he spoke to her about being a female reporter, which had nothing to do with race. You know, so, uh, no, it doesn't at all. It doesn't change the fact of what Cam, I don't even look at her differently. I wouldn't have thought anything differently from her, just to be honest. So I don't look at her in any different aspect saying, oh, she's an awful, she's a bad person now. You know, uh, to take away anything from the press conference. You know, the press conference is still the press conference, and it's still the exact same. I don't see it changing at all, and I don't know why it would. Charles? Okay, so um, it, I don't know why I, I should be shocked that um, the, the investigators of Twitter, what that is is victim blank, what it is. Um, they searched her tweets. They were looking for anything like those tweets were from 2013 in order to pull those tweets up. You had to search specific words and that's what they did. Now I will say this. She must be the dumbest person I've ever seen. Like why in the world would you not clean out your Twitter account? Because I'm going to tell y'all what, if I ever like have to run for like office or something, I'm deleting my entire Twitter account. Do you know how many people I've told to eat a dick since I've been on Twitter? I am deleting. I don't call people nigger doodles. I have to delete a whole you lot really of stuff. You really call people nigger doodles. I just can't understand why you would call people that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Rita, I'm the most racist black person ever. Like, really? I can come up, I can come up with a tell te- out. It's the, it's the slave master that has sneaked out that's of my that, pores. That's the house, that's the house <laughs> negro and you coming out. I come up with some terrible things. And my dad, my dad, if my dad saw that at Red Twitter, he would call me immediately, like, just like he did when I called Cornell West a coon on Facebook. He called me. He was so embarrassed. So, <laughs> but, um, so yes, you need to delete all of that. But, you know, the what I see, and what I see from people that I respect, from people that I feel have better critical thinking skills than what they have, which is something that me and Rita harp on all the time. We need to get that on a t shirt. Where are your critical yeah. thinking skills? Um, from people that I think are able to have nuanced conversations. I see them saying, oh, well, don't matter what Cam said now, because she, she back in the day, her and her daddy was in the car, and they say they saw a nigga running down the road or some shit. I don't know what she said. But I was like, this don't make no sense. I was like, y'all, this is two separate things. And you know Facebook, you know Facebook is all over. They screen cap it and all of that kind of stuff. This is two different conversations, y'all. And how dare you to make me choose to be a woman or whether I want to be black when I'm both. And you want me to say, oh, well, you got to rock with Cam now because she said racist things. Fuck you. I ain't got to do none of that. I'm both. And I'm offended by both. And I can do that at the same time. 
So I think that's weak. I know some weak little man went and searching all of those tweets and then, you know, the blavity black folks went on there and they, you know, they got to post the think pieces and all of that kind of stuff. But I think that people are participating in conversations that they do not have the range to participate in and they look foolish on the internet. I, I see a lot of people that um, don't know how to walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, tunnel vision is something that I'm learning is very common for human beings. I don't understand how y- y'all got here. Maybe it's us being on social media. I don't know. But apparently you can't multitask and you can't sit here and say, okay, cool. They found her old tweets. She's a racist or, or she said racist things. That's cool. However, I'm, I'm, this still is this. And so I don't understand why we feel like she gets, he didn't even know who she was. So let's be clear. Cam didn't make his comments because he knew that she tweeted that way. He didn't know her name. He didn't give a shit about her prior to the comments that he made. So let's not act like it was some vendetta being sought out against her. Like this was, this happened because someone was upset with the fact that Cam in their mind, unfairly was being criticized Mm -hmm. and they wanted to find some way to deflect what was going on and put it off on her. It was really unfair and it was fucked up. I can say that and still say her tweets from five, four or five years ago were fucked up. Okay. So I can, I can separate the two here. Whoever found her tweets was dead ass wrong because at that point she had done nothing for you to do that to begin with. And I can also Mm -hmm. say, Okay, well, so we're here now. The bitch said some racist things. Sorry, excuse my French, but not really, because you said some racist shit, lady, and you it is what it is. You gotta you gotta eat that. But it doesn't take anything away from me. He still said what he said. It doesn't matter. And I can't understand why people think, oh, because this happened, now this is it, this has less value. That's so untrue. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I just and want people awesome. to get a fucking clue. Like that's ridiculous, Philip. I'm sorry. Did you want to interject here? Yes, I mean, I, I'm in total agreement. Now, now, if she made a, a racial slur at the press conference, now those tweets are 100% relevant. However, you know, that, that wasn't the case. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how did you go find these tweets from five years ago and at what angle was you going to say Cam was right or he wasn't wrong from showing her racial tweets? That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What was the point? of the tweets other than to slander her because of what's going on with her and cam so i think it was definitely went in from the wrong angle to you know try to diminish her character in order to uh either i wouldn't say elevate cam but to kind of water down what's going on in cam's comments but it was it was it was distasteful both her tweets and the reason behind them trying to slander that lady's character because of those tweets to take away from what's on the table now. I, I mean, I, I, I said what I had to say. I mean, fuck Cam, but fuck that lady too. And that's pretty much where I'm, I stand with it. I can say fuck them both and still say mm-hmm. what Cam started this whole damn thing. Like, we wouldn't even know that she said shit like that until Cam nope. did what he did. So, I mean, yep. okay, if you want me to be mad at her, fine. I'll be mad at her. She. First of all, you said some dumb things. And secondly, you weren't even smart enough to, like, delete the shit once you got a job and a blue check. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, fuck you too, lady. But it doesn't take anything from the fact that I wouldn't even know who she was in terms of, like, her racist rant unless Cam didn't say what he said. And so I'm not, I'm not giving him a pass. I'm not – it doesn't negate anything for me. Like, I can – I think that that's the part that being a black woman in this is very hard is that – we are at the point at this intersection where, okay, here's racism here, and then here's sexism here, and we have to have this balance. And it's so odd because what he did was wrong, but then your black person had got to come on and say, okay, well, this was fucked up. And, and it, it just becomes a lot, but you can't lose focus of how we got here. And how we got here is because of the things that Cam said. I'm just not going, I'm never going to give him a pass simply because right. he's a fucking idiot. I'm not. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk about some football. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, let's talk about some, some on-the-field stuff, um, which is still some off-the-field stuff, too. This is more politics, but hey, here we go. So you have 
the Titans obviously have some issues with Marcus Mariota. Um, he is uh, injured. And so I believe Matt Castle is the backup. So they wanted to bring in someone else. Um, nowadays, you got court, they, uh, most teams do two quarterbacks. They brought in a couple of guys and tried them out, and um, the Titans decide to go with Brandon Wheaton. Um, Brandon Flintstone feet, who really don't do a whole lot of moving around. If you did not notice this, if you don't watch Titans games, because maybe you don't give a shit about Tennessee, they're a, pretty much a read op- option type of offense. Um, they like to run the ball heavy, of course. Mariota likes to d- do his reads and maybe grab one in and take it in. And they feel that Brandon Whedon is the perfect backup for Matt Castle in this situation. Mm-hmm. Although there's another guy out there by the name of Colin Kaepernick who has done read option offenses pretty much his whole NFL career. So mm-hmm. are we? do we have to come to the realization that Cap is just not going to get a job again? Like, is this the line here that, okay, maybe this is not ever going to happen again? And, Philip, I'd like to start with you with that. Yeah, uh, I don't see Cap getting a job. Uh, I mean, I hope so. He she deserves one, and and as in the off season, he was like, yeah, he'll have one by mid season. He'll have one. Teams just okay. They're trying to see where their quarterbacks at. But when quarterbacks start going down and teams start signing other quarterbacks, that hope starts to diminish. Starts to diminish. All right, especially with Brandon Weeden. Brandon Weeden. This guy here, first of all. He's about 40. You know, he played like six years in college. He is old as you know, he's, like, he's like 40. All right? So you look at Marcus Mariota, his style of play in college, his style of play in the league. You look at Brandon Wheaton, not a comparison. You look at Kaepernick. Yes. Yeah, so for them to say he's not a fit in their offense, I, uh, I'd rather them just come out and say, man, we're not going to sign Kaepernick. Because just, just tell us the truth. Don't talk to us like we got fool written on our head. Just come out and say, you know, we're not going to sign this cat because we don't want to. We, we don't want to want the uh, what the media attention, the negative media attention. Teams would rather go zero and sixteen, zero and sixteen, zero and sixteen without cap than win a damn Super Bowl with Colin Kaepernick, and that is so obvious right now. You know, they they are not going to at all ride with cap at all, and it's systematic oppression. Hands down, systematic oppression, and, and it's and it's been like that forever. You know, he was a messiah in his era, a leader in his era. So we said, how can we dumb down what he's doing and dismiss him? You know, back in the '60s, they would have killed him, but now it's like, well, let's just do away with him, get him out of the forefront, you know, and go play ball because he was gonna make, he was making a huge difference, still making a difference. You know, he, he's a he's a trailblazer in his own way. So and that's kind of frowned upon if it's not quote unquote what the whites want, you know, and that's exactly what's going on with Cap. And they're showing the way, the reason they're doing Cap today is to keep copycats away, to keep anyone from wanting to come out and do the same thing. They're discouraging them to do that. And it's trickled down all the way to the high school level of high school principals and coaches saying that kids will be kicked off the team if they voice themselves in that manner to bring awareness to systematic oppression. Um, I'd just like to say power to the people. Um, you know, I love, you know, I love some good black talk, <laughs> but let, let me just piggyback, piggyback on what you said. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree with everything that you said. Um, especially because you bring up systematic oppression and that is something that hasn't been said with regards to the NFL, but here's why one of the, one of the reasons, one of the ways that, um, um, white supremacy, white people operating in whiteness, in white supremacy, have used to keep black people under thumb is loss of livelihood. And that is what we saw with Muhammad Ali. That is what we saw with Tommy Smith and John Carlos. That is what we saw with Fannie Lou Hamer, who lost her job as a sharecropper when she started trying to get people to register to vote. That is what they do. It's loss of livelihood. And that is what happens to Colin Kaepernick. They know he's good. They know Brandon Weed. You may as well put me out there on the field. They know but it is loss of livelihood it is to prove a point and it is to keep from copycats from happening. Um, they, they do not want that heat that will come. And, um, and, and even though some of them may, you know, may agree, may not agree. You can't shadow the fence on this. Either you are, or you are standing. 
There ain't no goddamn locking of no motherfucking arms. Scoop. I ain't mean to say. Yeah, it is. Um, it, is. it is what it is. Okay. Yeah. We, we don't like to curse that bad on here. But it, it's either you kneeling or, kneeling or you're standing. You got to choose a side. And I suggest you choose the side that's righteous. Because when history plays back and when that 30 for 30 start rolling, what are you going to look like? <laughs> I know what I'm going to look like. What are you going to look like? And these team owners, this NFL, they are not going to look pretty. Just like when you roll back the tapes of Muhammad Ali, these people do not look pretty because even though they deified him in the last years of, he, of his life, they did so after he lost his voice. So if, and if Cap was like Muhammad Ali, my God. <laughs> so I, I agree with you 100%. I came in, I was rose-colored glasses. I said by week four, Cap is on the team. You got E.J. Manuel starting for the Las Vegas Raiders. E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel is just good to look at. That's it. That's it. I can't even believe the Bills drafted him. Just good to look at. That's it. E.J. Man- when they said E.J. Manuel, I- did I text you a read? I said E.J. Manuel still in the league. What in the world is going on? I said this doesn't make any sense. And if you don't call Cap now, Cap need to be in a Raiders uniform so I can get that jersey, a black jersey with a seven on it. No, nope, they're not going to do it. I don't think they'll do it. I think that Al Davis would do it, but I don't think his son would do it. So I, I agree. I had high hopes. I think that this team, these teams will, would rather tank. Breaking news, breaking, breaking news, 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 Cam Newton, I, I think, uh, apologize. I see a video of him on Twitter. Obviously, I can't hear, but it, it was posted at 8.58 p.m. on 10.5. I'm assuming it's an apology about his words. So... You know, I guess we'll, we'll, that's something else we'll have to talk about maybe next week. But I believe that this is an apology that Cam Newton um, is is giving. So um, he looks he looks his facial expressions look kind of sincere. So maybe he's been doing some training on on how to look serious. I I don't know because I can't take it serious. <laughs> Whatever. Right, I, 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 I want to circle back to the EJ Manuel and him being a starting quarterback. First of all. Shouts out to Is that your friend? Is that your friend? Buffalo. I'm not playing with EJ and Buck. Well, he was on the team in Buffalo, okay? Just look at this. He was a first-round pick in the Buffalo. Lose his spot to Cal Orton. Yeah. Cal yeah. Orton. Urban Meyer comes out and say, EJ, I don't know how EJ Manuel got drafted. This is his college coach and says, I have no idea how this man was drafted. And so for him to be starting and Colin Kaepernick still not being in the league is is. There's no other reason why. And you hear owners try to take that cop out. Well, he don't fit our system. As an offensive coordinator, you build your system around your quarterback. The same system that Dak Prescott is running is not what Romo would have ran. They're two totally different quarterbacks. So as an offensive coordinator and a a head coach, you build your system around the quarterback that you have. Uh, The second string quarterback in Dallas is Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore, but we keep saying Cap does not fit systems. Cap won 49 games in four years when he was with Harbaugh. 49 games. 49 games. Super Bowl, NFC uh, Championship every year. So how can we say his body of work is not deserving to be on someone's NFL roster right now? It's, it's, it's bullshit, to be honest. You it's racism. That's yeah, definitely you know, systematic oppression. It's... Definitely racism. Um, I, I have given up on the notion. I think that the only saving grace here would be um, Oakland or Seattle. Um, however, I don't think that Mark Davis is his father by any means. Al Davis would have signed Colin Kaepernick. I truly believe that if Al Davis were still alive, he would sign Colin Kaepernick. Al Davis has been a trailblazer for so many minorities over the years. Um, that and he doesn't give a fuck about the NFL. Clearly, he's he sued the NFL. He's beaten the NFL. So we know Al Davis is not. He was not afraid of the NFL, which I believe that he would have been the one to do it. Um, I, I don't think that Mark Davis is that guy. And uh, you know he could prove me wrong, but it was already, it had already come out that Mark Davis wasn't too thrilled about the anthem thing until no. Donald Trump said what he said. Then he jumped on board. He was pissed. But before then, he was he was like, uh, no, nah, I don't know how I feel about that. So that tells me that he's nothing like his father. And I'm not saying that in, like he's soft. I, I'm not saying it's anything. I'm just saying that he's not Al Davis because Al Davis was definitely one of a kind. With the Seattle situation, I, I do think that they were afraid that Russell Wilson would struggle and that people would call for him. But Russell Wilson is the one that's getting paid that money. And you 
then come into a situation where, okay, we paid this guy all this money, but then we benching him for this guy that we didn't pay any money. And now we might have to pay him some money. And so I just feel like outside of those two teams, there's nobody else that I think that would be willing to take a risk and say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then the backlash will go away because this is the man that's already said that he would stand the following year. And that that's not good enough for them. I just think at, at this point, um, Kaepernick is too good for the NFL. I think that Kaepernick's calling is what it is. And I think that, you know, if they don't want you there, fuck them, you know, because you got a lot of people that has your back. You have a lot of people that's supportive of you and supportive of what you're doing. And I saw a tweet that really resonated with me is that, um, someone said you back to you, Charles, with this Muhammad Ali thing. Someone said, you can't be, you can't be down for Muhammad Ali and then be against what Colin, Ka- Colin Kaepernick has done. Cause Muhammad Ali, Ali did a lot of things. He, he didn't go to the drafts. He didn't get, go to the army. And he got a lot of backlash about that. Like the, there are things about Muhammad Ali that people back in the day also didn't like. And like you say, once he lost his voice, then, then you decided you like Muhammad Ali, mm-hmm. but you can't be down for that cause and say that, you know, we, we started this transparency of color bullshit and then have a problem with Colin Kaepernick, who took the time to educate himself and find ways to not be disrespectful to the military while being, you know, putting his point of view across him on how he felt about the oppression of people of color in this country. So I, I think that it's unfortunate, but funny is maybe it's not unfortunate. Maybe he is meant for something bigger and maybe the NFL is the ones that's going to lose out. I think my biggest concern is, is I, I just want him to be paid for what he's doing. Like he's doing, he's making sacrifices and he's giving money. I want, I, I just want him to be able to, have oh. enough to take care of himself. Oh yeah. Don't, don't, oh, Cap, uh, uh, don't worry about cap. Cap got money. And when you give, you get back 10 times over. Don't worry about that. So he that, will that be was, well that taken care of. Concern. I think that his moment, I think that his purpose was to go through life the way he has gone through his life. Absolutely. And it was to it was to take over that job. It was to go to the Super Bowl. It was to lose his job. It was to get benched or whatever. And it was to uh I don't know who he started reading stuff. He got tied up with Harry Edwards, who's a good one to get tied up with. And he started realizing who he was. And I think that everything he did is purposeful and on time. And he has done so much more on this, on the other side of the NFL than in the NFL. I know he wants to play. I know his heart is in it, but soon he will come to realize I am, my mission is, and I think Cap, I think Cap is fulfilled. I think that I he think is he fulfilled. fulfilled. I, think I think that, um, I think that he sleeps at night, but I think a whole lot of people don't sleep at night. And that's, that's, that's they going to have to reconcile with that. I can echo that, man. Cap, Cap, Cap is on the entire different level now you know from just seeing him as the kid that came from nevada you know from a broken family you know to his biological parents you know just showing up in his life as he's getting ready to get drafted you know cap has come such a long way and if i could pick any player in the nfl that would have did that i can't say it would have been cap you know so a lot of people keep throwing out protests 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 however i think cap is more of bringing awareness because what he's doing and him kneeling, you can't tell me that's disrespectful to the flag. I said, oh, okay, well, let me go read. First of all, that's not even a way to disrespect the flag by kneeling. It's not. It's not on there. You know, however, wearing it as clothing, bandanas, all that is disrespectful to the flag, yet we do it. But no one talks about that. So it's like let's just diminish his movement. And the thing about it, the more you try to diminish it, the more it's more empowered. You know, the, the more people are saying, okay, this is what Cap talked. Now, everything that happens, people are going to say, this is what Cap was talking about. This is what Cap was talking about. Because when it first happened, everybody was like, oh, there's no such thing as pro- police brutality. That's not that. People are not dead in the streets. Now he's going more to show you the systematic oppression. Every day he goes without a job, his point is proven more and more every day. Every day, every week that he's not out there on the field, his point is being proven that what he kneeled for, what he spoke for, what he brought awareness to was 100% true. I completely agree. Um, I I just wish the best for him, man. Like, at this point, I just think that NFL um, would be lucky to have him at this point. Um, You know, if if that's the hill that they want to die on, so be it. But Cap has matured in so many ways that 
I, I, I believe that what he's done is the right decision. And I hope it continues a conversation about inequality of black and brown people and the oppression of black and brown people. As long as the, the as long as his message can stay alive, I'm down for whatever it is that, that Cap decides to do. And, and if the NFL doesn't appreciate him, screw it. Man, one owner that I'm kind of let down about is my guy, Jerry Jones. First of all, Jerry is known for taking that chance on the trouble guy, the quote-unquote trouble guy, whether it was a T.O., whether it was a Pac-Man, Adam Jones. You know, Jerry was that guy to say, I'm going to bring this attention, make a splash with this guy. So for him not to give Cap, it shows how high and how afraid of Kaepernick that the NFL is. They're they're truly afraid of this guy and the impact that he's going to make if he's on the team for one he come out and he win you ball games. Oh shit! That's the scariest thing ever. If this, if this rebel comes out here and wins ball games, what do we do? Yep. What yep. Do we do. I completely agree. All right, so let's do, let's do some right, let's do some picks. And uh, you know, we haven't done this all year, Chels. It was brought to my attention by one of our listeners that we haven't even picked games. But that's because we be talking about some other stuff, some more important stuff. But now that we have Philip here, let's just. Kind of go over some games uh, before we go to, to college real fast. Um, all right, so you got Buffalo at Cincinnati uh, starting off at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Who you guys got, Philip? I got Buffalo, and surprisingly, that's probably the most overachieving team in the NFL right now. Because you look at it, you draft Mr. Watkins, and he's supposed to be our new guy, and you just deals him out of nowhere, breaking news, we're trading him. And everybody like, what the hell is Buffalo doing? And Buffalo is playing good football right now, so I'm going with Buffalo. Chels? Um, Buffalo because last week Rex Ryan said he picked Buffalo um, to beat, to win, and, and he said because they owe him a whole lot of money, and I feel like we got to just keep on playing it that way, so I'm going to pick Buffalo. <laughs> I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to pick Cincinnati. Um, I believe that Buffalo has some injuries um, on offense, and um, if Cincinnati – can get AJ Green moving again. Yes, I know Buffalo has a top five defense. I'm not dis- that's, I'm not discrediting them at all. But I think if I think if you can find a way to make AJ Green uncoverable again, this could potentially be a long day. So I'm going to go the other way with the Bengals. All right, yes, yes, please. Who's going to give AJ the football? Give AJ the football. Dalton didn't give AJ the football. Even whether we like him or not, he does it. <laughs> all right, we got Jets at Cleveland. Is this the week they the win? Battle of the basement. We gotta watch that game. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not watching it. I ain't wasting my time. I say the Jets because I'm not. I'm. I ain't never picking Cleveland. I don't care who they play. I don't care if Cleveland play themselves. I ain't picking them. I will pick the Jets. I'm going with the Jets as well, man. They can. Uh, they can run the football, man. They run the football, manage the game, and they'll win the game. I'm going with um, the Jets as well. I think Crowell was complaining about something, and so that means he's whiny. And the Browns are just still the Browns. Like, they ain't doing shit. So, yeah, I'm going to roll with the Jets as well. Carolina at Detroit. This should be a, a, a good game. A Both good teams game. are 3-1. Yeah, that should be a good game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with Detroit on that one, though. Um, I think that I think that their defense may be a little bit better than the Patriots. I think the Patriots are suspect as hell. So, I think that um, I think they're going to give them some, uh, give them a little bit more there. I'm going to Detroit. I'm watching the Patriots lose. Uh, I'm uh, I'm actually going with Carolina, man. I'm going with Carolina. Uh, what what one thing about Cam Newton is, I mean, a kid can play fucking football, regardless of what what we think about him in the media. Man, he rises to the occasion. I think he goes out with a a, a chip on his a boulder on his shoulder, and he's. I think he goes out and he lights it up with Benjamin. Man, I'm I'm going with Carolina. I think. I am going to go with Carolina as well. Like I, I, I'm gonna tell you now, I was I was Detroit, but I do think that sometimes when you have situations like this happen, you feel like you have something extra to play for. So I, I think I'm gonna roll with Carolina just for the sake of the fact that Cam Newton been the talk of the town, uh, and will continue to be the talk of the town through the weekend. So he got to find a way to make us forget about all that bullshit that he didn't say. San Francisco at Indianapolis. That's I, this sounds like a shit show on paper, but I bet you that's watchable. I bet. <laughs> Uh huh. That's gonna be a watchable game. Um, we got my man, um, Jacoby Brissett, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go Indianapolis. Philip, uh, Philip. I'm a ride with Indy. Uh, 
T.Y. Hilton is one of the most under, I'm not going to say underrated, but he's a receiver that can really change the game. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, T.Y. Hilton, I'm going with end, and I think T.Y. has a, a big game against San Francisco defense. I am going to go, I'm going to go with, with, with Chelsea. Hmm? I am going to go with San Francisco. Um, they're all in four, but they they get to the brink. I feel like they're like close. They might like get there. And the Colts defense, although they played a little bit better, they still play shitty against a, a, a Seattle team that isn't that good. That offensive line is really bad, and somehow they scored forty eight points. So I think I'm gonna go with San Francisco to finally get a win. Um, for the first time, San Fran is so, cursed, so. man. How they did hardball, man. They're cursed. They're cursed. And they probably got about four or five more years on that curse. Damn, four or five? Jesus Christ. That's a long time. All right. Tennessee at Miami. Phillip, who you got? I like Tennessee. I like Tennessee. Even uh, if Mariota does not go, you know, I think they depend heavily on DeMarco, you know, hearing that run game. And the defense is playing. It's, it's playing good enough. You know, I think the secondary is getting better, better every week with the young Kevin Byard. You know, uh, he's playing well at the safety position. So I think uh, Tennessee rallies around whoever they have on the center, you know. Castle. And, Castle. <laughs> and they just uh, rely heavily on the run game, you know, and I think they come out. It's, it's going to be a close one. I think Tennessee comes out and wins it. Chels? I'm not, pick- I'm not picking any teams with Brandon Whedon on it. <laughs> Miami. <laughs> if Jay Cutler wasn't a quarterback in the team, I would probably pick Miami, but – Jay Cutler don't give a fuck about football, and he's really pissed off that y'all motherfuckers <laughs> pay him time out of retirement to play football. So I just can't see how this is any different. I, yes, I, I don't know how Matt Castle got here, but I just I just don't think Jay Cutler gives two fucks about football. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Titans. All right, Chargers at Giants. Both of these teams are um, not winnable, so somebody's got to win. So somebody's going to go win five, and somebody's going to get their first win. So which one do you guys have? Phillip first. I'm going with the Giants. And I know as a Cowboys fan, but the, on paper, the Giants are a sexy football team. I I personally don't understand what's not clicking with the Giants other than Eli. Eli is the only quarterback that can win and lose you the game in the same game. However, I'm I'm going with the Giants. I think the Giants come out, and I think this is the week they get the ball rolling, you know, uh, spreading the ball out. The, the, defense, the defensive line plays better. Uh, this is the week that the Giants gets it going. Chels? Uh, I don't have. Can, am I on? Oh, sorry, because I didn't unmute myself. My bad. Um, I'm live. <laughs> is I'm live, baby. We <laughs> live, baby. Um, pick the Giants because they haven't won any games. But there can't be. I, I, I cannot trust the Chargers. I cannot trust the Chargers. I mean, their fans don't even go to the game. So I cannot trust them. Um, I don't trust Phillip Rivers. Uh, I'm sorry, Rita. Please don't come for me. But I just don't see how you can be that talented and you just don't be winning no games like you should or get really close in games and lose and stuff like that. And, and I ain't feeling it. I think the Giants get win number one this week. And it makes me want to throw up even saying it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a roll with the G-men too. Um, I love look. Everybody knows I love Philip Rivers, but he's clearly on the other side of um, his prime. Honestly, all of these quarterbacks in the 2004 draft are been slowing down. Eli just yeah, luckily got Odell Beckham, and then Philip Rivers is always down by three with two minutes to go. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and and not roll with the G-men. I'm gonna roll with the Chargers. All right, before we go, we gotta go college. We have to because Charles and I love college football. And, um, you know, we, we have to go there. Sam Darnold, I don't know if you guys saw, but he played Wazoo last week. He did not play well. Um, Luke Falk played much better than he did, and they ended up winning Wazoo um, in the final minutes of the game. So the re- speculation has been going back and forth now about whether or not Darnold um, wants to go to the draft. I believe he has eight interceptions in five games. Um, if you're Darnold, would you, or, or not if you're Darnold, spectator of watching him play do you guys think that he should stick it out one more year and play his junior year or that he should go into the draft 2018 because his draft may stop what about start with you Uh, i think you stay you know however it's a that's one of the hardest questions ever you know should a guy leave should he stay should he leave should he stay and usually it's it's predominantly at the quarterback position you know and it's a lot that goes into that decision you know you got to see who's coming out 
who's going back to school. You know, so those are a lot of things, which quarterbacks are going into the draft and what they're looking like, how their season was. And off to a bad start like that, I definitely think if it doesn't turn around, he has to come back and play another year. Chell? I think that it is a good idea if he stays um, and does his junior year there. Um, We saw – I don't want to compare him to Andrew Luck, but that's what Andrew Luck did. Um, I think Andrew Luck has a way different kind of support system around him, but um, that's what he did. I think that what we are seeing with Sam Donald is he is every play, every snap is a Heisman performance for him. And maybe in college another year will release some of the pressure that he's feeling for being in the Heisman running. And actually he can play some damn football. Also, he clearly needs to build um, to improve some of his mechanics. I mean, we saw that game. He had us watching him in the middle of the night. You know, me and Rita are a wash. We had to take a nap beforehand to stay up and watch that game. And when he was stripped, um, when he was, when he was stripped of that ball, he was holding the ball horribly. I mean, anyone could have stripped that ball. So he definitely needs to work on that. But I I think the biggest thing is it will release some of the pressure that I feel he is feeling to be a Heisman front runner and to actually get the Heisman. And every he's trying to make the big uh, the big play every single snap, and it's just not working out for him like that. I mean, um, and and it's looking bad, and he looks real funny in the light. He looks funny in the light. So I think he should stay. Go right back where he uh, go right back to USC. I I don't, you know, I think for him, um, if he wants to learn a little bit more of some things, he probably needs to stay. Now, we know how hard that is. And Philip said that, I mean, you know, people have families to feed or, you know, people are just ready to move on to the next chapter. But he doesn't look ready to me. I mean, you're you're making mistakes that once you get into the league and those players are stronger and faster – they're going to be big mistakes. And I just think that he needs – there's some fundamentals that he needs to work on. Um, I'm just not impressed with Darnold, although they love to put him over the top of my man, Lamarvelous, Mr. Lamar Jackson. But Darnold ain't doing shit. Shout out to Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. My man. Team Lamarvelous over here. We love Lamar on here. We love Lamar on this podcast. But, But he hasn't done shit to make you think. To, well, for me, he, he hasn't done anything to make me think that he is a better NFL prospect than Lamar. Yes, if you want to talk about potential, I mean, I guess, I, I, I guess if that's if that's your thing. But to, to me, what's on the film is my thing. And so for what I see, one is way more polished than the other, and one has a lot of work to do. And so, you know, we make excuses for all these guys, Josh Allen, um, Josh, uh, Rosen. All Josh Rosen. Mm-hmm. But, but Darnold honestly, probably has the best personnel out of all of them, and yet he continues to struggle. So I just don't think that he needs to come out next year at all. I think he needs to try to figure out what he needs to do to not throw that many interceptions and to find a way to, to be the number one overall pick next year. Because if some team picks some number one overall now, they desperate as shit and they press this out because he is not a number one overall pick right now. Like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> So that yeah, that that's my thing. I don't give a damn about Sam Darnold uh, in terms of what he does or what he doesn't do. But I am going to tell you that you need some work, young man. So I, I think you need to work on on that and not be worried about cashing in because your ass gonna get in this league and you gonna get blown the fuck up. And then you are gonna be my boy Jake Locker, who was like, "Fuck this, I give up." Just after a couple years of being drafted, <laughs> we seen how that went. Hey, I forgot all about him. <laughs> See, you just forgot about Jake Locker, didn't you? Forgot all about him. That Locker is a guy that I think that's probably a bad example for me to use because he was a guy that people wanted to come out a year early and then he didn't and he waited and then he just it just never transpired. But Locker more year was good enough to come out. Darnold in his sophomore year ain't good enough to come out. That's the difference. Like one guy was pretty good and then waited and the other guy needs some work done. Like he, like, he mixed that shit. Go ahead, go ahead, Philip. It, it, injuries kind of played into the, the, the locker situation. It, it did. And he was playing on a bad ball club, too. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it was miserable, you know. He had nothing on the outside. His running backs was below average. You know, the quarter, I mean, the, the head coach, what, was he mentally there or was he not there? You know, it was a lot that definitely played into Jake Locker's career in Nashville. You know, it, it, it's a it, it's a 
bad football city. You know, the stadium is piss poor. There's nothing around the stadium. You know, a lot played into the decision of him driving up to that stadium every day and his his performance, you know. So a lot went into locker. So if it's to see him hang it up, it's like, ah, uh, you know. But I heard Chels bring up uh, Luck earlier, you know. Uh, a lot of people is high – was high on luck, whatever. But if you look at his his postseason numbers, man, he he's turning the ball over. He's gonna turn it over. Postseason, he he he's gonna turn the ball over. You know, so everybody wanted him to be the next great white hope, to the next Johnny Unitas, next Peyton Manning in Indy. I don't see it in Andrew Luck, you know, and that's my opinion. I may get stoned for saying that, but I, I don't see that next great quarterback in Andrew Luck in Indianapolis. And I know it's kind of off the topic, but I remember Chelsea had spoke on. Andrew Luck early, and I'm just, you know, not all the way sold on that guy. Well, well, I mean, we don't know what Andrew Luck even has going on. I mean, Andrew Luck is he sitting talk about playing for nobody with a line like that. He is not coming back no time soon. He don't give a damn, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Andrew Luck is like, I, Andrew is watching. Do you see him smiling on the sideline? That's because he ain't getting tore out the frame. They have ruined that boy. So, no, I, I, I think that, yeah, no. No, 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 man. Count your dollars, man. Count your dollars. Count your dollars. All right, guys. So this has been great. I mean, we've gone way over than we normally do, but we had to get some things off of our chest. So excuse us for having a little bit longer podcast than we normally do. Philip, can you tell people how they could um, follow you or your Twitter? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at, uh, at ptana 34 also, if you have in the Dallas area, man, Kimball High School is where I'm at. It's in, like I said, inner city Dallas. Come by and just show your face, you know, show your support to inner city youth. We're trying to make a movement and trying to, you know, bring awareness and do away with systematic oppression. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't laughing at that. <laughs> that. That was an inside thought I had. But also, you should also tell them, let everybody know what it is is that you are doing right now that I think is awesome, where you are working right now. Uh, right now, I'm working at Kimball High School, man, as a football coach, track coach, and also uh, teach PE. You know, one of my biggest things, I tell you all the time about who my biggest role model was, which was uh, Harriet Tubman. And a lot of people ask me that. You know, my biggest, the thing about Harriet Tubman was, one thing she did that was just so magnificent to me is she was successful, but she turned into being significant. You know, Harriet Tubman made it out, you know, in a time where everybody talked about it, everybody laid around and sung about it. She put that shit to action, and she got out, and she got away. And one thing she did once she got away, she turned around and she came back. She could have easily set off and counted the chill, lived it up, but she decided to go back and help her people, you know. So that's kind of where I'm at in life right now. I, mean, I walked away from the NFL a couple of years ago, and uh, I still have text messages from GM texting me saying, you know, uh, we would like for you to come back. However, man, I'm, I'm at a place in my life where I want to want to give back to these kids and help them get out, you know, because a lot of inner city kids want to. They just have no clue in hell how to do it. You know, so with Harriet Tubman, she she was that light. She was that voice. She was that extra, uh, the extra encouragement that every other slave on that plantation needed. You know, so I just want to be that, that spark of light in the inner city for any and every kid that's that extra, uh, that I can do it. You know, and I'm there every step of the way. Every day I walk through those doors to help those kids get to where they want to get to in life and better themselves and then be able to pour back and better their community. All right. All right. I think um I think um I think you you may be a little bit like uh Colin Kaepernick, like that that this is your moment. This is what you're supposed to be doing. So um we definitely commend that. But uh, on the selfish side, so you mean you turning down jobs on teams and me and Rita can't be in the damn uh booth, we can't be in the suites. I mean, I feel like you're being a little bit selfish. Man, y'all wouldn't know how to act, man. Y'all would be up there with them high-end white ladies, man, and y'all be in there talking that shit, man. I look up, y'all be up there fighting. <laughs> we we got to keep y'all motherfuckers, man, you know, at, you know, away. You know, keep y'all doing what y'all doing right here, man. <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing about fighting because one of us on this podcast has been fighting at stadiums. I ain't going to say no names, but one person Ooh. on this podcast has done is known to run off at the mouth at opposing teams at stadiums. I don't know who she talks about. No name. Huh? You know, maybe it's filler. Maybe you was getting right fight when you was playing in uh in the NFL. I don't know who she's talking uh, about. Not 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 me. All right, all right. Well on that note we're gonna end this podcast. Y'all know how to reach us. The NFL chick and <laughs> right on this here Twitter. And uh you can find the rest of our podcast at CSPN and iTunes and till next week I'm sure someone else will do something foolish 
to have us talking about it and we are going to do just that so we hope you guys tune in next week all right have a good night so don't get comfortable look i don't dance now i make money move say i don't gotta dance i make money move if i see you now speak that means i don't fuck with you i'm a boss who i work with i make bloody moves